<laughs> Good evening. I call the meeting of the City Council of the City of Pacifica to order for April 27th, 2015. Roll call, please. Councilmember Keener? Here. Councilmember O'Neill? Here. Councilmember Nyhart? Oh, so here. <laughs> Catch the wave. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Degree? Present. Mayor Irvin? Present. <laughs> Can't see a Please thing. Please rise and join me in the salute to the flag. When do we get to take these we off? Can, can we take these <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Put these others on so I Do we have a closed session report? Thank you. Um, I have one announcement to make, and that is that item seven, the proposed 2015 2016 federal uh, general fund balance, uh, budget, will be delayed for um, next council meeting session. So we will not be having item seven on the budget tonight. Um, and so just wanted to let anybody know that is here for that item that they won't have to wait for that. Okay, this brings us to the consent calendar. Persons wishing to address the council on any consent calendar item may do so at this time. Each speaker will be allotted three minutes. Those wishing to address the council on any item listed on the agenda should submit a speaker card um, in the back of the room and give it to our city clerk. Items on the consent calendar will be adopted by one motion unless a council member or person in the audience requests before the vote or on the motion to have an item discussed under the consideration portion of the agenda. Time limit on comments is three minutes or less. Do I have any cards or consent items? Seeing no one, I will bring it back to council. Um, and I just also want to announce that um, I will be abstaining from voting on the minutes um, in the consent calendar because I was not here at the last meeting. Do I have um, any move, comments? Or? Move to approve the Second. consent calendar. Great. Okay. Please vote. And that passes five to zero. Okay, tonight um, we have a presentation that will be given by the Youth Advisory Board. Um, whom I'm very excited to hear about. It's been a long time and uh, great to have you here. Uh, report, please. Good evening, Madam Mayor, City Council members. My name is Michael Perez. I'm the director for the Department of Parks, Beach, and Recreation. And um, thank you very much for uh, having the youth here tonight. Um, I'm very pleased uh, to be associated with this group of fine young people that are here. And before they get going, I would like to introduce um, the recreation coordinator, who is the liaison with the groups. And she is right here. This is Tamara Oskui. And she's got a few people to introduce as well. Good evening, my name is Tamara Oskui. I'm the Recreation Coordinator with the Parks, Beaches, and Recreation Department. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce uh, two members of our team that assist uh, myself with advising the Youth Advisory Board. Um, and there are Isamar Salas, who's an employee with the City of Pacifica, and then Denise Reed, who um, has, uh, was an employee with the City of Pacifica um, and has since moved on, but is still volunteering her time. With that, I'd like for the Youth Advisory Board member to come up and introduce themselves. Thank you. Great, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Christian Lum. I'm a senior at Terranova High School, and I'm the president of the Pacifica YAB. Hello, my name is Christina Freider. I'm a junior at Terranova, and I am the vice president of the Youth Advisory Board. Hi, I'm Jennifer Barrett, and I'm a senior at Terranova, and I'm the secretary of the Youth Advisory Board. Hi, I'm Erin Boyle. I am a junior at Terranova High School, and I am the historian of the YAB. Hi, I'm Sydney Barker, and I'm a general youth advisory board member. I'm also a senior at Terranova. Hi, I'm Emma Olson. I'm a junior at Terranova, and I'm also a um, youth advisory board member. I'm Ari Lum. I'm a YAB member, and I'm a junior at Terranova. Hi, I'm Selena Leguizma. I'm a junior at Notre Dame, and I'm a YAB member. Hi, I'm Daisy Paulson. I'm a freshman at Mercy Burlingame, and I am also a member. 
Hi, I'm Joshua Jung. I'm a freshman at Terra Nova and I am a YAB member. Hi, I'm Alexis Balmaga. I'm a, I'm a junior at Sacred Heart Cathedral and I'm a YAB member. Good evening, my name is Izumar and I'm the youth advisor for the YAB. Um, and I just wanted to say that it's been great working for the YAB members and our new recreation coordinator, Tamara, who is so fun to work with. Um, I also just wanted to talk about the Y members who were so devoted to working the events this year. Um, they were fun and they were, f they were great. And I want to wish the seniors of Terra Nova and other high schools the best of luck in their new journey to college. Okay, so what is the YAV? The YAV is a way for teens to enhance their leadership capabilities. It creates a voice for the youth within the community, provides activities led by youth and for youth, and focuses on volunteerism. So as previ previously stated, our elected positions, um, Christian Lem is our president, I'm the current vice president, Jennifer Barrett is our secretary, and our historian is Aaron Boyle. And our um, board members include Alexis Balamaga, Sydney Barker, Joshua Jung, Selena Laguizma, Ari Alum, Emma Olson, Shayla Patel, and Daisy Paulson. In the Youth Advisory Board mission statement, is to act as a liaison to the Parks, Beaches, and Recreation Commission within the youth and teen population, especially related to incorporated programs and duties of the city. Serves as a tool to familiarize the youth with the city government, assist in minimizing or resolving community problems relating to youth, gives advice and assistance on matters concerning the needs of the youth and serves as a formal voice of the youth. The YAB vision, uh, throughout participation within the board, the youth will collaborate their ideas to hold YAB sponsored community events, as well as assist at department functions and provide outreach to the community. We will also obtain skills in leadership, public speaking, marketing, peer relations, and philanthropy. And last, we will gain a sense of community service accomplishment. So some of our objectives for the 2014-2015 year was to build a relationship between the YAB and the commission, and this includes having a quarterly report, attending one to two commission meetings, and inviting commissioners to a YAB meeting. And in terms of fundraisers, our objectives have been to work the Fog Fest Parade as root helpers, um, work the Spectacular and Elf Markets uh, working at Snack Bar. And I'm proud to say that each of these events and uh, objectives that we have have been uh, very successful. So for the other half of our, objective, our objectives, we planned events. So we had a community movie night um, at the community center and we had about 60 people turn up and we want, or turn up, yeah, turn up. And it was um, uh, Lilo and Stitch and it was a great success. And then um, about two weeks ago, we had our, community, our spring community service project, was, which was the community egg hunt and that was very successful as well. And as for things for the future, we would like to have a teen snow trip and a Disneyland trip. Mm -hmm. And then the YAB has participated in many events. In 2014, we helped the, with the Spooktacular and the Elf Market. And in 2015, we've been doing J-Teen Dances, the Egg Hunt, Earth Day, and Junior Olympics. So the YAB has had a really positive year and we would like to share some of the experiences we had with you guys. Our first question is, what did you get out of the YAB? And personally, I got a new sense of confidence, a lot of new friends, and most importantly, a sense of warmth that only really comes from helping other people. It's really great because you get to um, help others and you see all your hard work um, pay off through all of the people um, that are really happy attending all of the events that we put on. My most memorable part of YAB was working the JT da J Teen Dances because it brings back old memories. 
My most memorable part of YAB was getting to see all the kids smiling and having a lot of fun at the events we worked at, like the Spooktacular and the Easter Egg Hunt. My most memorable part of being a part of the YAB is also volunteering at the JT dances because I like to see all the kids having a good time because I had a good time at them too. Our final question is, how did we improve the community? Uh, I feel that we have brought uh, the community together with our events and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I also feel that we improve the community by giving opportunities for Pacifica's youth to be brought together and to create lasting memories for them in this town. Okay, and that concludes our presentation for the night. I'd just like to thank you guys for giving us, giving us the time to present for you. And I know that I won't be here next year, but the rest of the members are looking for, forward to a great year next year. Great. Thank you all so much. And you're not, and unfortunately, we have, we have actually a number of questions. I think it's really wonderful to hear from you, and I think you've, uh, you've created a lot of uh, curiosity. We haven't heard from you in a long time. It's just great to see you here, and we so much appreciate you coming to a council meeting to present. So a couple of the council members are going to ask you some questions, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, let's start with uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Su Degree. Uh, thank you very much. Really proud of you. It's been a, one, a soft spot in my heart to have youth involved. It's nice to see so many schools involved, and I'm sure you're ambassadors to others at your school, as well as in our community, about community service and the first step into local government. So I really appreciate and like to encourage our city to have you as much involved as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council Member O'Neill. I was actually left for saying yes to the consent calendar, but um, I have to, it is good to see the youth involved and, you know, learning how government works and how the community works. And I mean, it is, I was a recreation major, so I know how much fun it is to put something together and see all the smiling faces of both young and old. And my daughter was part of the youth advisory board when she was in high school and she thoroughly enjoyed it also. So thank you for your service. Thank you. Councilmember uh, Nyhart. I just want to add my thank you, uh, both as a volunteer in the community, because volunteerism is what makes a community. And in this particular community, we use a ton of volunteers for a lot of different things. So I really do appreciate and seeing you at Fog Fest, seeing you on the parade route, seeing you out doing things with spectacular and. Thank goodness somebody chaperones those um, <laughs> JT dances. Uh, <laughs> um, but they are fun, and I am so glad you have a lot of good memories. Thank you just so much for your service. Thank you. Okay, Council Member Keener. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just echo what Marianne said. Um, we have a lot of volunteers in this community in, in all facets of uh, life, and uh, your, your spirit is to, uh, uh, to be admired. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I did have a couple questions. Um, so how often do you meet? Uh, we meet about twice every month. So it's, uh, I believe, the first Tuesday or Wednesday in the beginning of the month and the last one at the end of the month. And then at the meetings, we just go over our general, like, uh, our general agenda and just talk about what we plan on doing and right. our future events and stuff like that. And, and you meet at? The, at the community center. OK, great. And um, I was going to ask about the schools. I noticed that there was a f quite a few different schools. How does somebody get involved in the Youth Service Bureau? How do, how do they sign up? To how do they sign up to right. like join the uh, Youth Advisory Board? Right. Mm -hmm. So we have, there's applications online, and you can also pick them up at the community center, I believe. But we've, what we've been doing since we all go to like a wide variety of schools, we've um, put like our members in contact with like the leadership class at these schools, and they've been also publicizing our application and things like that. That's great. And are any of you that are seniors, um, so you're leaving and going off, um, do you think it's helped in your applications to go to college or in your future endeavors? Just curious. Being a part of the Youth Advisory Board? Right. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because um, 
it's definitely just like a plus saying that you get to be a part of this um, great program, but also it teaches you all the leadership and communication and just like skills that you need to work with, work with people in everyday life. So it definitely has prepared me a lot for like college and life. That's great, and I completely agree. I think it is going to help you, and you help our community so much. So thank you so much for being here and um, stepping in to learn about your city and to do what you can to help your community. It's really wonderful. You guys are doing a great job, and we are so appreciative of having you here tonight. So thanks again. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Would you guys I'll mind? Wait. Would you guys mind? We'd like to take a quick picture. We're all going to get down there and take a, a picture with you guys. Okay. <laughs> we can't ever, ever go without. This is this is a real sacrifice. Oh God! <laughs> I'll, I'll wander down here like the ancient person that I am. <laughs> nothing like a, a nothing like an injury to make you feel this. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Those are so cute. Grab them. Grab them. Give me this from the youth. These are easy to Get in there, see do work. Yeah. They're cute. Thanks for the glasses. <laughs> so they must have been the happy okay. birthday group. Yeah, I yeah. have a feeling that's uh, what they're there. Okay. Oh, have that. I don't see anybody else who has that much gusto out there. Picture <laughs> taker. Okay, when everybody gets settled, we are going to start with council communications. The purpose of council communications is for council members to inform each other and uh, anybody watching of uh, items of potential interest to other council members, such as interagency meetings, that might be important for you guys to hear about um, and be informed about that are happening in the community. So uh, is this light accurate here? Yes. Okay. <laughs> council member <laughs> Nyhard. <laughs> oh, okay. I start thought there'd be others on. All right. Um, First thing I want to remind people that are listening and also in the audience, if some of you remember hearing about One Bay Area planning, you may have heard some of the demonstrations that happened in the East Bay with uh, the Association of Bay Area Governments and the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. There was a strong set of feedback that said, we didn't have any input. 
Well, one of many meetings that has been going on, but I want to make sure people are invited. In San Mateo County, we have an opportunity in this next cycle to give our input on May 6th at 7 p.m. San Mateo County Event Center at the Event Pavilion. Um, I'm actually staffing one of the tables, but 1346 uh, Saratoga Drive in San Mateo, and we would love to see you come give your input, talk about transit-oriented housing or not, whether it fits your priority conservation areas. We're going to talk about one of those tonight. So um, please come out. Please put your input in, because this is the opportunity, uh, along with others, that might come along. But we've had several already. And we haven't had a lot of people turn out, so I'm really making a push. On Thursday this week, Daly City Youth Health is celebrating their 25th anniversary. And I should have said this while the youth were still here because that's what they do is provide services to our high school district. And it's incredibly important for us to go and support them. And so that's what we will be doing, I know some of us, on uh, April 30th. I also wanted to say that to the council, um, that CCAG, the City and County Association of Governments, will be uh, hearing David Pine's presentation on the f what uh, our city manager has briefed us on in terms of a white paper with what we're doing with sea level rise, with um, storm water, with groundwater, and then with flood control districts. And um, while he'll be doing that presentation, CCAG is going to take that up in a subcommittee and get input from all the cities and take a leadership role in getting elected's input because it's been unfortunately somewhat controversial in how it's been initiated. So we're going to make sure that electeds do have their input heard. And then, last but not least, I know we were all there, but I'd like to encourage since, um, and I, w I don't know what you want to do, but uh, about this, I'll put it to the city manager, but it looks like maybe there could be a point person in PBNR or something. But um, we heard a presentation at Council of Cities on uh, Super Bowl 50. And Super Bowl 50 being you know, just around the corner, we got to see this layout for the the uh, Super Bowl city in San Francisco. We've been hearing about it on the transportation agencies for a while, just because it's going to be a huge moving them from San Francisco south. But one of the things that they are offering is kind of uh, use of Super Bowl, use of the logo in some ways the one for San Francisco, um, in a super cities kind of uh, 110 cities in the Bay Area can be selected. And there's no cost to those cities. You can They will give you banners and stuff like that. But it's sort of a way to participate, get listed. And they didn't realize that Sharp Park, I talked to the chair of the host committee um, after the presentation, they didn't realize Sharp Park Golf Course was actually in Pacifica. Wow. So now all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, we should probably do one of these events because they were planning several golf events while this is going on here so they're interested and it would be nice the only catch is the city itself has to sign up i checked it out on the website um so we probably should sign up soon if we're going to do it but and then you can use the logo on different events if you want you know like you're doing a a fog jog for Super Bowl or something. I, you know, I've just made that up. Um, but you, you get the idea. And then you can use those banners and stuff to decorate. And it serves them, and it also serves us. And I think that would be a good thing for us to do. OK. Great. Thank you for that report. Uh, Council Member Degree. I uh, just want to congratulate uh, the Terranova Robotics Group uh, youth. They've been doing incredible uh, successes, and I want to make sure that we give uh, congratulations and encouragement to them. It's like Silicon Valley right here in our own young people, so that's yeah. very exciting. That They rank third in the world, <laughs> third in the world, uh, and heading into championships, so really very proud about that. Uh, listening to the community on our 
concerns everywhere I go is uh, water issues, obviously, and skyrocketing rents. So um, our community, like many others, are suffering from uh, skyrocketing rents, to be sure, and would like us to be talking about those things. The general plan conversation, which is extremely serious and important, is coming up here uh, in Chambers on May 3rd, so please mark your calendars. And was there anything May else? May 11th. May 11th. May 11th. Yeah. I'm rushing things, sorry. <laughs> so maybe you should start looking into it on May 3rd. But anyway, it's here at May 11th. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's it. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for that report. Uh, Council Member O'Neill. Well, like I said, last time it was like I didn't do anything, but this time it's <laughs> quite a bit. Went, I went for a stroll in Rockaway for the benefit of the Resource Center on Sunday. Also participated, pa passing out some food at the Resource Center's food distribution this month. And uh, also went to the new employee recognition um, soiree thrown by the city manager at City Hall and met our new um, new employees personnel person, the new finance director was there, the, the Tina who had already met the new planning director, and the, there was one other new employee there. Um, I met her too. <laughs> Anyhow, um, well, the, one of the interesting things that I went to was the um, progress seminar down in Monterey, and that was very worthwhile. I met a lady who uh, we're going to follow up on when we hire our economic development person, and she's in charge of, well, she's not in charge of, but she works with over 20 different retailers and site locations for those retailers. Uh, I also met with a gentleman that works, that runs a shopping center, not here in Pacifica, but another shopping center. Center. So it'll be a nice conversation with him and some different ideas. And I think that would be good to implement and make a part of our plans for Palmetto. There was also a thing on affordable housing and it was interesting that the biggest gentrification in Pacifica is happening up at Fairmont and then East and West Sharp Park, East Sharp Park more than that is second. Lindemar is not, I would guess that's because the houses in Lindemar are all one level. And so I thought that was just kind of interesting. So. It was well worth going down there. Um, just about anybody that, all the electeds I think were down there in school districts, the supervisors, staff, companies, state level employees and state level legislature. So it was very worthwhile to go down there to Monterey, I think. Thank you for that report, Council Member O'Neill. Uh, Council Member Keener. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it seems like I spent the last couple of weeks uh, following Mike around. <laughs> So I, I also went to the uh, new employees meet and greet, and uh, thank you, Lori, for uh, orchestrating all that, and welcome to the new employees. Um, uh, the senior volunteers dinner, um, I helped serve on that. Uh, that is uh, something where the uh, parks, beaches, and recreation uh, staff and a few others uh, serve all of the volunteers dinner. And uh, so I was honored to do that also. Um, the Emergency Preparedness Committee, um, very little to report there. Um, on uh, the day before um, the EcoFest, uh, I participated in a couple of cleanups. Uh, one was on uh, Higgins Way, which uh, for those of you who don't know, yeah, the old coast route going up over the hill to Monterra. And uh, it, it was actually beyond Higgins Way, and we cleared a lot of brush and so on. And, uh, and I caught po poison oak. I was going to say, <laughs> that's a great place to get it. <laughs> yep, yep, it is. Uh, uh, and maybe I learned my lesson. I don't know. Um, in the afternoon on that day, uh, I picked up uh, trash along Highway 1, and it was primarily cigarette butts, about 70, 80 percent oh, of God, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, the EcoFest, uh, I attended that and learned a great deal about bees and, and uh, um, you know, enjoyed all the, uh, the other festivities. Um, the Harvest Baskets for the Pacifica Resource Center, I do that every month, and uh, I did that again with Mike. Um, Council of Cities, I did that with everybody. <laughs> um, let's see, oh, the, the uh, um, 
congestion management and uh, environmental quality meeting. This is the first one I've uh, attended, and uh, Mike is uh, the uh, vice chair. Um, and it, we, it was interesting. We saw a, a presentation on um, uh, alternative routes to use in case of a bad accident on, on Highway 101. And what's interesting is that um, uh, they're trying, uh, um, uh, you know, intelligent uh, traffic management on El Camino Real. Finally. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And one last thing. Um, I, I don't think they're here yet. Um, if they're watching, uh, my three sisters are visiting from Columbus, Ohio, uh, along with their spouses. So <laughs> hello to them. And uh, the reason they're visiting is because uh, my son got engaged. <laughs> Congratulations. Just as a, a point to to um, intelligent, it's called the Smart Corridor, and it's a an interesting concept that gives me great hope about Caltrans because it's actually taken us about three years of work on the City and County Association of Governments of getting all the pieces for that, and the hope is that that will be in place very soon. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, it's. Um, it will be, we can actually, the cities along the corridor will be able to control lights, control traffic, control exits, watch. I mean, it's really pretty, pretty fascinating. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you for that report as well, and congratulations to you. Um, I'm just going to mention a few things um, <laughs> that I have been doing over the past couple weeks. One, I think our city manager mentioned um, that I attended a mayor's walk several weeks ago with um, um, our city manager, Lori Tinfo, and our chief of police, Dan Steedle, and our um, director of public works, Van Ocampo, and um, our, the CEO of the chamber, Courtney Conlin, attended. And it was very, very informative. We were in Lindemar, and we heard from most residents. And I think um, there were some repeating themes there. Uh, obviously, people, as we've been discussing over the past several weeks, are concerned about things like uh, vacancy rates and rising costs of rent and costs that are related to them. Um, and just they, their, their strongest message I really felt like was they want to be kept in the loop about what's happening at Lindemar and in the shopping center. So that's something that I think is really important in our future communications with the um, uh, landlords and uh, Kimco and the other landlords in the area that our community really wants to be part of the conversation. And, um, you know, we have a lot of really important things to say. And the other point that I think was really important was how much our uh, business owners truly love Pacifica and want to stay here and they want to be part of our community and that is something that we really are um, wanting to to push for moving forward so I think it was a really beneficial talk we end we're um, we are uh, planning on visiting the second half of Lindemar uh, shopping center in another couple of weeks and we'll let you know when that takes place as well I also attended the Progress Sem Seminar at Monterey. Again, a great place to network. Many, many businesses are there. It's sponsored by the Redwood City Chamber of Commerce. So you've got tons of great businesses. You've got uh, councils from all over the Bay Area. And then they provide forums that you listen to. And uh, so some of those forums were on uh, retail planning. So again, on the same timeline as um, you know our issues with the sh shopping centers. Very, very interesting. Great feedback from a variety of places. And and again, important for, for all of these retail areas to hear from their community members that's, that we are partners with our community and our retail owners. So again, that uh, theme keeps reoccurring. Um, another uh, important forum that was at the Monterey uh, Progress Seminar was an issue on transportation. It comes up again and again. I also went to a, uh, with Councilmember Nyhart to um, the ABAG General Assembly. And again, one of the primary issues is talking about transportation, especially along the 101 corridor. And the fact is, is that we are growing and it, it is not going to stop anytime soon. So we have to address our growing population, growing transportation problems. And what was really significantly addressed at the ABAG General Assembly was our need to 
to address the water issue with the growing population and with our transportation issues that ABAG next time they update their uh, the needs assessment they really need to uh, address our water issue it's an, a gr rapidly as everybody knows growing problem and a great concern for so many people so that is really becoming um, a primary issue that people are talking about um, and, it, and it was really felt beneficial to be there and part of that conversation. Um, again, we attended the Council of Cities dinner and um, another thing I wanted to mention that I did is I um, provided a state of the city to the Pacifica Rotary and I'm incredibly grateful to the Rotary for inviting the city to come and give a state of the city. Um, again, a primary theme that kept coming up was the concern about our economy um, and how we're going to address that, how we're all going to come together um, in the next, in, in the years to come to um, not only survive but thrive and have an economically sustainable as well as environmentally and socially sustainable community that we can all thrive in. So again, I want to um, say thank you very much to the Rotary for inviting us to be there. It was greatly appreciated. And again, I'm happy if anybody else would like to hear a state of the city or my uh, perspectives on how we're moving forward, I'd be happy to share those with you. And I think that's about all I need to say right now. So thanks so much. Okay, next is oral communications. This portion of the agenda is available for the public to address the city council on any issue that is not on the agenda. Any person wishing to address the council shall be recognized by the mayor during oral communications, provided, however, that during the oral communications portion of the agenda, not only items not on the agenda for the, for the meeting may be addressed. All remarks shall be addressed to the council as a body and not to any member thereof. Council members shall not enter into debate with speakers under oral communications. A maximum time of three minutes will be allowed for any speaker pursuant to Pacifica Municipal Code Title II, Chapter 1, Section 2-118. Any person making impertinent, slanderous, or profane remarks or who become boisterous while addressing the council shall be called to order by the presiding officer and if such conduct continues, may at the direction of the presiding officer be ordered barred from further audience before the council during the meeting. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and invite a couple people um, who have cards for um, oral communication. And the first card I have is for uh, Cheryl Calson. Hi, thank you, Cheryl. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, Ron and I are here tonight because we wanted to bring up uh, the topic of the housing element. Uh, we understand that it is scheduled for approval on May 11th, and as uh, Council Member Degree mentioned, uh, the general plan update is also going to be that scheduled for that night. And Ron and I are out on vacation; we're out of the country, so we can't be there. So that's why we wanted to. Um, address you about the housing element. Um, we learned about 10 days ago that just that, that the housing element had been updated in a draft form and that it was uh, going to be presented for approval on the 11th. We looked it up, we reviewed it, we discovered that the Calson property had been removed from the housing element and what we learned was it was because it was seen as contentious. Um, we went to the 520 um, Planning Commission meeting and we were able to get the language about it being contentious out. However, um, we were not able to uh, have it placed back into the housing element. We are in the process of an appeal, um, but we would like council to really strongly consider um, placing the, the Calson property back into the housing element draft. Uh, I think the current uh, housing element speaks to 115 units. Ron knows more about that stuff. Um, but we believe that that's probably a too high number and that maybe something like 50 of a maximum would be a more appropriate. So let Ron speak. Okay, thank uh, you. And Ron Kelsey. We, uh, um, uh, again, as Cheryl said, we're surprised to learn what happened the other night and not expecting it at all. Um, we had uh, been in the, in the present uh, housing element that, w that exists now. We had been. Oh, I still going? 
minute? Second. Okay, go ahead. We, uh, well, we, were, we were following it uh, when this went on uh, in the, pre in the existing, we're reset existing the plan. We're going to separate a separate uh, speaker. Yes. Sorry, go ahead, Ron. I'm sorry. And we uh, um, uh, were surprised that in the midst of what is a housing shortage, that you know that housing would be taken out of the general plan. This has been gone over and discussed with the uh, uh, the uh, state of California. The same staff person uh, was involved this time around as was last time around. The only thing that we've been able to find or see as a reason for this happening was that uh, it was being taken out because it's considered, somebody considered it contentious. And I know that the fellow that's the, uh, in the uh, uh, planning department now is an assistant planner. I don't know if he, if somebody else had, you know, an, an idea that he was instructed to do, to take it out or, or whatever. But it, it just, to me, is surprising. It was in 1908 zoned as a residential housing, uh, uh, which is what it is today, which is what the surrounding hillside is. It's the same, same uh, legal map as, 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 as all the houses that surround us. Um, it was uh, in the 1969 general plan, it was a medium density residential. Um, the only thing that's been built around us for the most part has been a couple of uh, buildings that were uh, termed mixed use that have about 800 square feet of commercial on the bottom and have some uh, residential above. Um, outside of that, it's, it's, there's been roughly 40 or so developments that have occurred that have been placed on the surrounding hillsides since, since we've owned the property over the last roughly 20 years. And um, uh, the, we learned just recently as well that the uh, existing uh, a drainage ditch and the sewer line that runs beneath our east border on what was called Howling Way, uh, the city doesn't have an easement for it. And it's been, it's been there for some time. But uh, um, so the, the, the other thing is about the site, you know, it, it, it's, it's part of the infrastructure was, was designed initially to be a, a residential housing uh, property. We, uh, we uh, were told uh, the last time that the, the existing zoning calls for about 115 units over ground floor commercial. As the, as the zoning sits now, they, uh, uh, Lee Diaz at the time said that he would uh, like to see it more compatible with the surrounding neighborhood, about 50 units. We said that's fine. We worked for two years with the PPCA group, the P P uh, Pedro Point Community Association, trying to find some kind of a, a, a meet, meeting ground. We offered to take half the site and make it all open space and the other half have some kind of housing project on that would blend in with the housing uh, on the surrounding hillside. And we met with we met with no cooperation. That's as simple as I can say it. And um, so I know I'm, this clock's running down here. I feel like a bomb's going to go off or something. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if there's anything else. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer anything I can. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much for those comments. And you may know that during oral communications, I'm not, I, we, are, we cannot um, oh. discuss items that aren't on the agenda. Okay. Oh, so okay. We, can I just ask for clarity in terms of what's happening exactly at the study session on the 11th? Uh, certainly. So at 5.30, May 11th, we will have a study session with the council and the planning commission here in this building. Uh, before you that night will be both the general plan and the housing element. Mm -hmm. And then later on, on on that same night's agenda, the housing element is going to be brought forward um, for council's consideration and adoption. The general plan will be separate from that action. It will not be uh, on the council's agenda that night for formal action. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. The next speaker I have is um, Tom Clifford. Mayor, Council, uh, before I start, I want to double check. What I'm going to talk about is the budget, but the budget is no longer on the agenda. Is that correct? That is so I correct. can talk about it? Yes, you can. Okay, thank you. I want to be really clear on that. Um, there's two things I would like to see happen as you go through the budget. One is if you actually have uh, ERAF money, that some of it get put into the reserve account. You've, you established the reserve account uh, a while back, and it's still zero balance in that. And I really think that the city needs to have a reserve. 
uh, and two, uh, the uh, the imbalance between the uh, the inter fund lending. I would like to see some kind of a plan to start paying that back, getting it those those funds balanced out. It's just it's it's something that should happen. I know it doesn't have to happen immediately, as as uh, Lori mentioned uh, when she gave last year's budget. But there should be some kind of plan coming forward with this budget, and that's all I got. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next speaker is Lynn Adams. Mostly, usually more, more together on this. Sorry. Oh, you're quite uh, all right. Well, first of all, I came to talk about Earth Day, and I wanted to thank um, John and Sue were able to make it. Um, I know everybody else was really busy. Um, it was a real pleasure to have the event. It was um, an honor. Uh, John was able to attend the VIB tour with us, and we raised awareness about the bees. But we took people from all over the county out, including um, school board members, um, uh, the Harbor District, um, uh, Assistant Vice Principal of um, Oceana High School. Um, we had just a wonderful representation. We had the bee, bee um, expert, John Heffernick, and it was delightful to go to the different locations um, to see the work that was happening and to see the joy in everybody um, who's working together. So I brought this map, which you probably can't see, but um, it basically has a lot of highlighted areas, and those are most of the areas that were cleaned up. Um, there's a lot of areas cleaned up that we don't even know about, that people just go outside. Uh, they sign up for their street, and they say, we're going to do this, and we don't really hear from them to get a report. Um, it takes us weeks, actually months um, sometimes, to get uh, the collection of reports that everybody um, has. So to tally the amount, I do know that we taught over 5,000 students here in Pacifica, in Daly City, a school in San Francisco, and a school in Monterra about the bees. The school assemblies were very powerful, very impactful. Um, we were able to um, kind of promote the economy of Pacifica by hiring a um, Pacifica Beach Coalition member, and she had support from other Pacifica Beach Coalition members as they had a little busy sewing bee, making our um, Earth Day uh, produce bags, which I would like to give to you. And our message is really to be the change, be an Earth hero, say no to all plastic bags, including produce bags, or even small bags for packs of gum and little things. Um, I was able to accumulate a lot of people's stories, not everyone's, not all the groups, but I did accumulate a lot of them. I'm going to give them to you with a produce bag as a thank you. Um, it has a photo, usually, and a little story from first-hand account of the people that are there. So truly a, a remarkable uh, report um, that's still growing from people not only doing the work, we have two parts to it, but also people at the EcoFest who come to celebrate um, the work that everybody's doing, to learn about the environment, to meet a lot of the volunteer groups that they can participate in, to, um, for this year, learn about the bees. We had three different bee vendors there and bee um, organizations that people could learn from, <clears throat> along with our own uh, community groups that do so much here in Pacifica that are able to share their messages. So the EcoFest was truly a remarkable event. Um, we estimate probably 2,000 people who came, and um, we're very blessed and honored to have it. Great. Thank you very, very much for everything. Great. So, I have one of these for all of you. Uh, thank, you thank, thank you very much, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, that's oh, never mind. Yeah, no, it's I don't have any other cards for oral communication, so if anybody doesn't have... Um, oh, the Anita Reese. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. It is. Sorry, Anita. I was thinking that was another agenda item, but um, please come forward. Thank you. Cool. Here you go. Uh, good evening. Uh, so... Anita Reese with the Pacifica Resource Center. And um, as some of you all mentioned, yesterday was our 40th anniversary stroll at Rockaway Beach. So thank you for those of you who could attend. Um, 
We had nearly 200 folks who attended the event and they strolled the shops at Rockaway Beach as well as celebrated our, um, celebrated the PRC and the services that we provide to the community. So I want to thank not only you all who were able to attend, but the community who was able to come, the support that we received, the sponsorships, um, and the donations, because without those donations, we wouldn't have been able to put the event on um, and have so much fun. We also had um, an, a professional auctioneer, Ed Gold, who is a Pacifica resident, do our auction this year, and it was a lot of fun to sort of see him kind of take it to the next level, which was really interesting. Um, it would have been more fun if more people kind of bantered with him, because I think that's part of the fun, but those who did had a good time. Um, I also just, I, I wanted to mention that in our 40 years, what I, as I was reflecting on our 40 years, even though I haven't been here for 40 years, um, I recognized that we have probably touched every single person in Pacifica, either directly or indirectly, um, through helping a friend, a neighbor, or a family member. Um, and we wouldn't have been able to do that without the support of the city as well as the community because we're a very small staff and with that small staff we can, we, we do more with the people that support us. Um, so that's our 40th anniversary, um, which continues throughout this year. We'll be, um, we have been asked to be the honorary Grand Marshals at the Fog Fest, so that'll be the end of our 40 year anniversary celebration, um, as I guess Fog Fest is celebrating their 30th, so it'll be a nice combination. Uh, we also have our Mother's Day uh, campaign going on right now. For, so for a $40 donation, we'll send a card to anyone you want to honor for Mother's Day. The artwork for that was um, designed by Lisa Warns, and what the card itself was designed by More Than Multimedia, both folks who are from Pacifica. Um, we're also having our volunteer recognition happening on May 27th at the American Legion Hall. We'll send out invitations next this week. And we're also getting ready for our back to school program. Even though school's still happening, <laughs> we have to start now. So we'll be signing up families and children beginning in June, and then we'll be distributing in early early August. So thank you. You'll be hearing more about that soon. Thanks so much. And it was a wonderful event yesterday, Nita. Um, okay, you don't want that. Yeah. Okay, with that, I don't have any more uh, cards. She says n number six. Yeah, she's yeah. there for PCA. Yeah, okay. So, with that, it brings us to item number four of considerations, Beautification Advisory Committee Annual Report for 2014-2015 uh, to <coughs> City Council. Looking very much forward to this report. Pass those down? Sure. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. Um, during the uh, May 13, 2013 Council meeting, the Council adopted a resolution requiring that all committee and uh, commissions to uh, submit an annual report to the Council. The report uh, basically will highlight or summarizes the uh, accomplishments of the committee that, uh, the, that particular year, as well as the future projects that they may have. Um, the Beautification Advisory Committee um, is composed of five members of the community and is charged with the implementation of the uh, Keep Pacifica Beautiful program of our beautification plan. Um, the committee, through its chair, uh, put together the report that's uh, before you tonight. And at this point, I'd like to turn over the microphone to uh, our current uh, chair, Ms. Ginny Jaquit. Thank you. Um, Mayor Irvin, members of the council, I'm delighted to be here as the uh, representing the Beautification Advisory Committee as uh, chair for this last year. Um, we have a presentation for you. It, and let me just make a comment before we begin. It, it's the first part of it is similar to that presentation which we did last year um, for two reasons. One, it it's a, provides an opportunity for Council Member Keener to be brought up to date. And it also gives us an opportunity to uh, remind the community about the work of the Beautification Advisory Committee and uh, the many projects that they can be involved in. So, there we go. Okay, so 2014-15 uh, uh, Beautification Advisory Board members. 
include uh, myself, uh, Vice Chair Wendy Santiago, uh, Patricia Hantalas, Dave Martinez, and Mike Mooney. Um, three of the, uh, uh, Wendy, Patricia, and uh, Dave are here in the audience, and you may have some questions for them as well. Um, our council liaisons have been um, Mayor Irvin, former Mayor uh, Nyhart, and um, Mayor Pro Tem Sue Degree. We had an election, I, I think I'm holding this wrong. We uh, had our election for chair and I want to announce that for this next year, uh, Wendy Santiago has been elected as chair and Dave Martinez has been elected as, as vice chair. Okay, so the charge of the beautification committee as Van indicated came as a result of the Keep Pacific a Beautiful plan that was established by the Beautification Task Force a couple of years ago. So the charge is to promote, coordinate, implement, and evaluate uh, the Keep Pacific a Beautiful program to solicit community groups and organizations, businesses, and individuals to help us implement that program. As you will recall, this is um, a project, uh, a program that's been designed to be, a, for the most part, a purely volunteer-based uh, effort. So um, the Beautification Committee is also charged with uh, assisting in the design of the projects that uh, uh, that happen in the community to serve in an advisory capacity to the Director of Public Works and to coordinate all the efforts that we have with state and uh, city agencies to ensure that we're complying with all the existing ordinances, policies, and, and practices. Um, the primary agencies besides the city really are the uh, often Caltrans because of our involvement in projects along Highway 1. Um, <clears throat> our focus overall for the um, uh, beautification committee, our advisory committee is, is through uh, volunteer efforts, beautify and unify Pacifica, especially those main thoroughfares, entrances to the city, and high profile areas that will improve the overall community environment and the look and, and really provide uh, a sense of community for, uh, for everyone uh, as we go through. Let me uh, flip to the next slide and just show you a little bit uh, about the practices. Um, we utilize environmentally appropriate landscape practices and you know we talked about mulch last year and the value and importance of mulching uh, and that's the first step really in any project that that we begin. Um, we uh, require that we use that drought tolerant, low maintenance, uh, or native landscape materials be used uh, in all of the projects. Uh, we incorporate drip irrigation and water efficient systems uh, in all of the landscape areas. Uh, and we continue um, environmentally appropriate maintenance practices. Um, this year, we just recently, in view of the drought um, situation adopted uh, a drought policy for 2015 and that policy is that a as we begin the new projects that are coming up and I will be describing those to you uh, we will do all the preparation work uh, prepare the um, do the design work work with the organizations to, to design the project um, prepare the soil, do all of the mulch work, all of that during the spring and summer, and then uh, do all of the planting in those areas in the fall so that we can maximize the, the rainy season, we hope, and um, therefore allow plants to establish and, and not have to be in a, you know, in a watering situation now. Um, just to review how, it, how the project works, a sponsoring organization, be it a group of businesses um, or a group of individuals or a community organization, uh, works with the BAC to um, design, prepare, and plant and actually implement the, the plan um, in, in accordance with the original beautification pro plan that's been established. Uh, the, the organization is responsible for raising the funds and covering the cost of the landscape and irrigation materials. Um, and they agree to maintain that specific site for two years. Uh, the beautification 
advisory committee assists with the design of the site and, and the development process. Uh, we assist uh, training volunteers so that they um, have some knowledge of how to plant uh, plant materials, how to maintain it appropriately, um, understand the, the value of the drip system and how all, all of that works. We assist them with purchasing uh, materials uh, and we do that through the Public Works Department because then we can get a discount on uh, materials, although the organizations pay for it themselves. And we also provide a, a sign that indicates who, um, who has actually sponsored the project. So a quick review of previous projects that are kind of fun to look at. Uh, the first one we did was two years ago, and that was um, the um, Grace McCarthy Vista Point. It was adopted by the Rotary Club of Pacifica. And uh, a couple of years ago, members were out there weeding and mulching, as you see. <laughs> and uh, now it looks like this as you drive down Sharp Park Road. And uh, so there's been a significant difference. And I would also just mention to you that there is no water access um, at, at Grace McCarthy, but with the um, design of a very intricate, I mean, a very interesting a water collection system. Um, the end result of that is some really nice plant materials and and a really nice looking project. Um, we finished this last year the Lindemar Boulevard median strips. We had talked about them last time, but they had not actually been finished. They were adopted by uh, North Coast County Water District, Vision Seaside Spa, um, Mike Durkin Real Estate and the Coastside Community Church. And these are um, uh, recent photographs of what, what they uh, are looking like now. So they, um, they really have added a great deal to uh, just the overall appearance of Lindemar Boulevard and that entrance to the community. And that this is a perfect example of what we want to accomplish with, uh, with all of these projects. Uh, and there is the uh, ribbon cutting and grand opening for the event and uh, all representatives from all of the uh, uh, organizations were there and received uh, our thanks for their work and thanks to um, former Mayor Nyhart uh, made the presentations to, uh, to all of the members. Uh, one of the projects we've done uh, this year is, uh, is really a fun project. It's Marvilla Park, which is a very small city park at the corner of Arguello and Marvilla Estates. It um, was adopted by Girl Scout Troop, I should say Junior Girl Scout Troop 60021. They are a group of fifth graders, uh, nine or ten fifth graders, who uh, decided that as a part of the Bronze Badge project that um, that um, the Girl Scouts uh, have to accomplish or should accomplish. It's a community service project. They decided to um, take on Marvilla Park after they had come up with a number of projects and voted for this one. So um, in the process of that, well, th these are some photos of their work. Now, let me give you just a quick description of what happened prior to all of this. They, um, they put together a plan uh, for how they were going to accomplish this. They did a survey, and they surveyed all the neighbors in, in and around the park area to find out what they were interested in. They met with members of the um, uh, beautification um, committee to learn about to put together the plan for the park and to learn about uh, how to appropriately plant uh, and utilize the plant materials. And they, um, they advertised uh, the, their, the day that they were planting in March, uh, in March just, a, just three or four weeks ago, um, they brought together a whole group of volunteers. So they had like 20 people out there working. And um, they were able to work with the Public Works Department as well, and who, was, who were very, um, very helpful in assisting with them. And they managed to uh, paint the, the sand and paint the benches at the park. They, were, they managed to take out all the invasive plant materials that were there to clear lots of areas and to put in new plant materials. Um, the Rotary Club of Pacifica decided to sponsor, to help sponsor the project. And so they, they donated the cost of the plant materials. And in one weekend, 
we had a brand new looking uh, Marvilla Park and they've just done a great job of that. So that's a project that we just got finished and is, is really, uh, was really a fun project to do. We have a number of projects coming um, uh, shortly. The next one is the Crespi parking lot planter box number two, which is the one um, <clears throat> from the Portola statue to Crespi Drive. And that's being adopted uh, by the and sponsored by the Pacifica Resource Center uh, volunteers, uh, not the center itself, but the volunteers in celebration of their uh, 40th anniversary as well. So it happens that on um, on Earth Day, a group uh, from, I believe, the Pacifica Garden Club came out and weeded that area. In a, another, sometime in May, we have a, a scheduled day to do uh, the mulching and to lay down the cardboard and do all of that work to prepare the site. And then in the fall, we will, the, the Resource Center volunteers will be doing the planting of it. So that will be the beginning of a whole revision around our Crespi Drive parking lot. and. There are several other opportunities there, and so I hope uh, folks who are watching uh, the meeting will consider taking on a project to finish so that we can finish all of those planter boxes. Um, so a couple of other future projects that are coming up. We're working with the merchants in the Terra Nova uh, Shopping Center area to uh, upgrade the uh, median strips on Terra Nova Boulevard and Odstead Boulevard. Uh, we are working with uh, the Master Gardeners program and the merchants in the Rockaway Beach area to upgrade the uh, city's parking lot area that's uh, in the central core of Rockaway Beach. And there is a greenhouse um, located behind the, <coughs> the, the Lindemar Fire Station and we are in the process of uh, identifying some ways to um, make that usable again and have provide opportunities for plant propagation and uh, <clears throat> and uh, you know work f by other community groups to help develop the plant materials we can then use in future projects um, so in addition this year we spent a great deal of time members of the committee working on the mayor's pacifica pride awards um, that i think you are familiar with and that began with uh, former mayor Nyhart. These are some examples of the award-winning projects, and they were I, the the pro program was designed to award um, landscaping work that's been done and upgrading of of uh, businesses and residential areas as well. And so these are just some examples of the award winners. Um, so winners included, and we should read those off, uh, Dwayne Berg, Cal Pacific, which is located at uh, Terra Nova Shopping Center, um, Erica Vold, I'm sorry, I can't see that that far away, <laughs> Vol Volkanoff, uh, Robert Erickson, Brenda Story and Wendy White, uh, William Selb, uh, Sandra Perry, uh, and Mazzetti's Bakery. So all of these were award winners selected by the committee and the, the subcommittee of the Beautification Advisory Committee that did that. First of all, our co-chairs were Dave Martinez and Patty Hantalas, who uh, did a great job as members of the Beautification Advisory Committee. Uh, mem other members included Bill Meyerhoff from the Pacifica Chamber, Cindy Abbott from the PB&R Commission, Joy uh, Hitzman and Scott uh, Cremelli. And um, the awards, as you will recall, were presented by the council in December uh, of this last year. So that's been the activity that's been happening this year. We have some recommendations we'd like to uh, present to the council for your consideration. The first of which is that we are recommending that the Beautification Advisory Committee be increased in numbers from five members to seven members. As you might imagine, there's lots of work you know, lots of work that goes on in between meetings, and uh, if we had <clears throat> we had a couple of more members, it would help to uh, to um, spread out the workload and make sure that we uh, get all of the projects done. The second recommendation comes uh, via the um, <clears throat> excuse me via via the mayor's. 
Pride Awards uh, subcommittee as well, and their recommendation, and it was also um, approved by the advisory committee, would be to change the name of the awards program to the Mayor's Beautification Awards. Um, and the second recommendation along those lines for your consideration is to convert the Mayor's Awards program rather than an annual <coughs> award program to uh, create a monthly award program and then do an annual uh, presentation of all of the award winners in December so that we it would be a monthly event hopefully we could uh, you know have pictures on the city website and um, and in the Tribune and therefore encourage more and more people to upgrade their own their own properties so those three recommendations are uh, are being presented to you and I would hope that um, in all three cases you could Put that on an agenda very very soon um, especially the first one uh, very very soon so that we could uh, move forward with that um, last little slide is just a special thanks as always to our sponsors and volunteers they um, they are wonderful in terms of getting these projects accomplished and secondly to the Department of Public Works in particular uh, director Ocampo and um, Aaron Clark, who is uh, the superintendent, and they've been extremely valuable in helping um, all of these projects be implemented. So with that, I will um, close my comments, and if you have any questions, uh, other members of the uh, beautification committee are here to uh, answer. I have one other little comment, but if you have any questions, I'll take those, and then I have one last comment. Sure, thanks so much. I think we do have uh, a few questions here. Okay. So I'll start with Council Member Nyhart. Oh, fewer questions than more comment. But, um, you know, I just can't thank this committee enough. And congratulations, Wendy, on uh, becoming chair. And uh, a special thank you to you, Jenny, because like everything else, you've really done an excellent job in terms of kind of chairing and keeping things on track and moving forward but as a whole this committee and all of its members i just want to say a huge thank you to all of you because you are the hardest working group i know and you have done an outstanding job of moving forward on the whole issue of making our city better and so starting the beautification you've done the objectives that we wanted and you accomplished them and i would definitely we had talked about the seven member concept several times before i think it's great you know i think um there was no weddedness to any name in terms of um the pride awards the beautification awards i i think that actually i don't know who came up with pride but um, it was really an issue of, of getting people to get that curb appeal back. That was even tossed around as a name for a while. Um, so I just think it's wonderful. My only concern and my only sort of question is, and I, I think it's a tremendous thing to, to have that energy to go forward with monthly awards, but that's, that's a lot of work. <laughs> Comments about that? Okay, Dave, he's got it. Yeah, I, I was just going to make a comment that we also have a subcommittee that works on that yeah, as well. Yeah. But yeah. Dave, go ahead if you want to make a comment. Um, I assume that's all right. Yeah. Madam the, the subcommittee that we picked for the, uh, uh, the wards um, go beyond on, on the work, and they want, they're, they're fully behind on wanting to do this. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I was with you. I was going, you sure you want to do it every month? But... Uh, you know, when you have these other people want to show pride in Pacifica, um, it, you can't say no. All right. So, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, every single one of you. I am so touched by it. this. Was a great success. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, a Mayor Pro Tem degree. Right, thank you very much. Really, definitely a lot of hard work appreciated. Uh, I do have a question. I'm just curious of why you wanted to change it from Pride to Beautification Award. I'll have to defer to uh, Dave or Patty on that. Uh, 
Um, in this in this nice community we live in, pride sometimes means other things sometimes. And we want to make sure that we want the people of the city to know that this is about the beautification of their houses and their properties. So we wanted to be clear on that. Okay, so it wasn't to limit the scope in any way? No, okay. no. We, we want both businesses and residents to be part of this. Okay, and then am I correct in assuming that when you're, because uh, I think once a month is ambitious, but looking at the drought issues and how crucial saving water is, are you tying that in with uh, water conservation? Um, we haven't really thought about water conservation, but in looking at beautification, though, we're looking at houses that look beautiful during the drought mm -hmm. that are drought-hardy gardens. So we are looking for that. Um, oh, and dear. especially with, with the drought that we're in right now, we're definitely promoting more drought-hardy gardens. We're not going to be looking at the uh, most high water usage garden being the, uh, a winner of a Pride Award this year. That's oh, for sure. I applaud you. That would be a wonderful example and encouragement to others. Thank you. Yes, uh, that's exactly the reason that uh, I think having a monthly award is good because it will keep that thought in everybody's mind. So, great, great. Okay, we Council Member O'Neill. <clears throat> I attended one of your meetings once, and it was pretty interesting to see how you work in the dynamics and how you plan on different mm -hmm. things. I also wanted to thank Aaron Clark back there, who was city staff helping oh, out. Sure and giving of his own time, not on his payroll, but volunteering to help make the city pretty. And I just wanted to thank Aaron and Van because they were both there at that meeting. But I just also wanted to commend you for the job you're doing. And I've looked at some of the houses and they're very attractive for the mayor's um, beautification award. So just thank you for your time and your efforts. Thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor, could I, could I just make one other comment sure. in response to that? Please. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just want to also mention that Aaron has taken, has done a lot of this yeah. work on his own time. I want to yeah. emphasize that. And uh, believe me, we really have appreciated uh, his efforts in, uh, in our behalf. Great. Council Member Keener? Yeah. Um, like uh, some other activities we've heard about tonight, this is um, a, an all-volunteer effort, and um, you know, it, to make our city more beautiful. And I applaud that. I I think I think if you don't mind, Wendy, did you want to make your? Of course. All right, and then I have one last comment as we wrap up our presentation. Sure, and and I I would just really quickly like to uh, again say thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure being part of this committee and to see all the hard work. There's only five of you, and you're involved in every single project, and you you not only are getting sponsors for these projects and creating these projects, you create the plant list, and you know all the work that goes into it. It's just it's a phenomenal amount of work and dedication and everybody's heart is so involved and so into doing this for Pacifica to make Pacifica a more beautiful place so it's it's just um, very moving to, to see you doing what you do and uh, I'm so appreciative to all of the subcommittee members as well as our uh, city staff that do so much as well and Wendy please um, you have a comment, we'd love to hear from you I just really want to encourage our community to keep Pacifica beautiful. That's really the heart of our committee, and it's the heart of the city council members that are on our, our that represent. They're the what is their title? Liaison. Liaison. There's the word. Yeah, <laughs> they're the liaisons. And you know, drought or no drought, we can keep Pacifica beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying being irresponsible. That's why we are, we're not going to do any plant installations until the fall. And we're going to all pray into our rain dances, whatever we do, so that nature can water these plants. And a lot of the pictures that you saw, um, well, the medians in particular, the Grace McCarthy, there's no water. They're not getting water right now. 
and they look beautiful and continue to look at them through the summer, they will look beautiful. There are plants that we can use that do not need a lot of water. And if we mulch, if there, there are things that we can do to keep Pacifica beautiful, drought or no drought. I just need to say that because I hear people saying, oh, I'm just going to let my yard go. You don't need to do that. Yeah, so, no, I gotta thank call you. you too. Thank you again. <laughs> thank I just have three last things to say. Mulch, 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 mulch. mulch, mulch, mulch. <laughs> Excellent. And, and oh, go ahead. That's all right. Oh, I, no, you go ahead because I do want to make sure that nobody from the uh, audience has any additional um, comments they'd like to make. I don't have any yellow cards, and um, I want to make sure that I give everybody an opportunity to speak. And if not, we'll bring okay. it back to council. And <clears throat> I have just one, one last thing. If you recall, um, last year we started a little thing about presenting the council with things and no. council member keener doesn't have his keep pacific Aww. beautiful <laughs> mug so i brought him one very good excellent thanks so much it's a beautiful yeah. cup one more thank thing. you very much okay and uh council member nyhart i just wanted to add one last thing you know i don't know how it's happened it's probably a configuration of things but certainly van and and Aaron, I know you have, that this whole effort has, if people haven't noticed, led to a cleanup along Highway 1 that has been pretty striking. And Aaron, I do know that you have spent an amazing amount of time on your own, completely outside of work, trimming trees, doing stuff that has just been we couldn't do it without you and I, I thanked you when I was mayor I'll thank you again now uh, it really is a volunteer effort with a lot of input from staff and it has reaped a lot of benefits and I want to tell you how grateful I am very good thank you Thank, thank you very much. And again, thank you to all the sponsors. Oh, and I have one more question. If some, so I'm sorry about that. If somebody is interested in being a sponsor at one of these sites, they're great opportunities. They're two-year commitments. Can you please tell anybody that might be listening how they get involved if they'd like to get involved? The easiest way would be to call the Public Works Department and talk with either Aaron or Van, and right. they will... Um, connect us with um, whoever is interested in sponsoring um, a project and we will be happily uh, engaged in working with them. Excellent. Thanks again. It's beautiful right. work and it really makes such a difference to Pacifica. Thank you. Thanks to all the sponsors as much too. Okay. Wait, one more thing. Oh, go ahead. Here it goes. <laughs> Going? Okay, so with that, um, we are moving to item number seven, I mean five, appointment to City of Pacifica Planning Commission, and the proposed action is to move to appoint two citizens to the Planning Commission. So. Before we do the staff report. Pardon me? Oh, staff report, please. Yeah, before we do the staff report, I just want to oh. uh, make one comment, and that... <laughs> I, for a variety of reasons, this month has been a bizarre month for me, including seven talks in eight cities, and that's why my back is killing me. But um, I was unable to make the planning commission interviews, and sticking with a longstanding pattern of mine, I personally do not feel that if I don't have exactly the same presentation that every other council member has, I should not vote on that item. So I will be recusing myself from this. I don't have to leave the room because I don't have a conflict, but I'm just going to recuse myself from voting or discussing. Okay. Shoot. And then those are the tally sheets in. Okay, so we're all going to vote and then uh, pass our list down to Kathy. Yes, please, and I'll just give a brief staff report. Sure. Um, the city has recruited applicants for the Planning Commission to fill two vacancies as a re result of expiring terms. These opportunities were advertised in the Pacifica Tribune three weeks consecutively. Interviews were conducted by the City Council on April 8, 2015. Great, thank you very much. Does any... This um, is planning, right? Yes, Planning Commission. Does anybody have any questions on Council? And, and I don't have any cards 
from the public either. So I'll bring it back to council. Don't pass it down. What do we do? Just vote? Just, no, you just pass it to me and I would give it to her to. We voting to, for. I'm so, I'm, but are we doing. Uh, they, you, not do Okay. We've always given it and then yes. we give it Madam to Madam Mayor. Oh. I'm asking a question about uh, beautification advisory. Okay. That's next one. I, I'm sorry. I'll just explain the process quickly. I just handed you some sheets with your names on them. And if you would kindly vote for two applicants. I didn't put my name on mine. I, no, it is on they you. Are, okay, they are. Never mind. I did it label is. them. <laughs> and if you could no, choose no, two you're candidates. You're a rough night tonight, Kurt. Right now I am. <laughs> okay. Just a moment. <laughs> Are there any questions on the process? Yeah, that's excellent. What's my name? No. <laughs> yeah, what's my name? Right. This is of item five, yes. I can't find my list of names for crying out loud. <laughs> oh, do you want me to tell you? Oh, I don't I'm know. sure they're here. Seven, six, one, two, three. Oh. Can write them all down. I have a whole bunch of lists here. If we need to do it. Just don't know where I put them. <laughs> I keep leaning in the way. That I'm just makes running. Sense. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the results of the informal poll. Wait, wait. Did she? Did you? Oh no, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm um, to have to is that. Josh Gordon received three votes? Um, Chuck Evans two. Thomas Clifford two. Samuel Casillas one. So two of the applicants are a tie. Mm -hmm. So we would need direction from the council. Can we? The top vote getter is Josh Gordon, and the two tie votes are Chuck Evans and Thomas Clifford. Okay. Just vote again, right? Um, so at, at this point, the council, the, uh, the results of the informal poll that the, the council has one candidate with three votes, and then two candidates with two votes. So the council's going to have to decide. Out of those three, which two would they like to appoint? Right. So we vote. So we're going to have a discussion, basically. Um, we and vote again. You're, this is all your light. Yeah. Okay. So we're not voting again at the moment. We are having a dis discussion. It's just deliberation. Um, a deliberation on if anybody would like to speak um, on behalf of of an individual either Chuck or Tom, and see if we can uh, transition our um, voting. Anybody like to start? Can have to move. Anybody want to advocate it? OK. Thank you, uh, Council Member Keener. Well, I voted for uh, Tom Clifford. and. Uh, um, probably for two reasons. Uh, one, he is uh, very familiar with uh, the building industry, being a builder, and um, uh, familiar with, with the Planning Commission, uh, having served on that. And um, uh, yeah, I can't remember the third, <laughs> third reason, but that's good enough. Okay. Would anyone else like a, to comment? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Degree. Well, I, I find the three gentlemen uh, very appropriate. They're very dedicated, and so it's extremely difficult. But I will say that uh, for everybody listening, the three of them are very, very capable and have been definitely uh, very involved. Uh, so it's a hard decision, even for me at the moment. Mm 
Any, any comments? Or I, I, um, I would just like to say it is a very difficult decision. We have three very high caliber people that all um, would serve and make great uh, um, uh, planning commissioners. Um, I personally feel that the two that are currently on there are doing a great job. My only issue um, that I had was concern about attendance, and that's been addressed. Um, they've been very committed for a long number of years. I know Chuck is routinely at uh, council meetings. He's very interested in what's going on. Um, and as a sitting council uh, planning commissioner, I don't find any reason why I would remove him at this time. I don't have any reason to, to take him off the planning commission. I think he's doing an excellent job. Um, Tom, I think you would do an excellent job as well. Um, so it is difficult, but um, I am very happy with our current planning commission as it exists. So um, that's why I'm uh, supporting Chuck Evans. I do have a question. Sure. Do we have term limits? They they go off at a certain time, so there's we not have term four, limits. They just we, end at a term. Yeah, they have to come up and um, <clears throat> Re rerun. So yeah, that was my um, only concern is when you mentioned take them off. So I, I I don't I don't feel like we're taking anybody off, and that new blood is always very good. So I just want to make sure I didn't misunderstand. So we're okay. Ready. So if there's no further deliberation, somebody, one of the council members could make a motion to appoint one or two, um, and then the council can vote. See what happens. All right. Um, is that your light, or is That's that all? I have it off, but you want to put it on? I'll put okay. It on. Anybody would like to make a motion? Um, I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Josh Gordon and Tom Clifford. I'll second it. Second. Can we make a motion for just one yes. instead of two? two. But now you have, a, you have a motion and a second. You'd have to declare. Okay, you, I, that I, I would. Can I withdraw it? You can withdraw. I'll withdraw the second. I'll withdraw my motion. Well, I would just, uh, I would just like to amend that we just nominate one person because one, <coughs> one individual got three votes, so yeah. that's a majority. So I would just like a motion for one person that's all do you want to make a motion I um, nominate Chuck Evans for the Planning Commission I'll second <laughs> I don't know if that's that's good <laughs> it's still gonna um, shall we shall we vote You never know. And that's a tie at two, two. <laughs> so we're not going, we're not getting very far. So um, let's see how we want to proceed with that, this. And I'll make another emotion, motion if you want. Sure. Do we like starting over? Yes. Okay. So do you want me to do it? Yeah, go ahead. So I will make a motion for Tom Clifford, mainly for uh, including some new blood. I'll second. That's going to be okay. More, more conversation. Yep. <laughs> we are again. <laughs> so I think at this point we, we probably need some conversation, um, some additional conversation. I don't, I don't know if anybody. Um, is you know really wanting to change their mind on, um, on their vote so did we uh actually appoint josh gordon no we oh not that i was going to make that should we yes do we want to do that yeah that'd be great if you can go if somebody needs to make a motion I'll, i move that uh, that we appoint josh gordon okay do i have a second i'll second okay please vote And that passes uh, four to zero. One abstain. Okay, so we're halfway there. Um, <laughs> so this is this. It's the other two halves that we have to worry about. Yeah, no. 
This is very difficult because um, I think, you know, we have very good people that are sitting here all qualified to run and um, people have their um, feeling on why. Is there any way we can, I don't know if you can be a tiebreaker or. I no. <laughs> <laughs> There's something, I'm not quite sure. Um, I wasn't well, at the interviews. You don't get to do it again. <laughs> right, right. And now you know these people well. Sorry. Um, Mayor Pro Tem degree. Well, I, I, since I already did one, I'll nominate Chuck Evans at this point. I'll second. Okay. Uh, make a vote. Please vote. <laughs> I'm thinking. Just, just wait a minute. And that passes four to zero. And uh, again, I just want to appreciate everybody's work here and know that that was very difficult. Um, we appreciate all of your work on the, on the planning commission, all three of you. So thank you very much for being here. Um, as well as I'd also like to say thank you to all of the um, people that um, applied for the planning commission position. Um, it, it, they were a great group of uh, pool of candidates and every single one of them would have done an excellent job being on the planning commission. So I'd really like to extend my appreciation to everybody who, um, who applied to be on the planning commission. Uh, I would just like to thank everybody that applied also, but I also wanted to make a motion to appoint Chuck Evans to the Planning Commission. Oh. We have to Did do that. that. Didn't we already do that? No. Do we actually, I thought we were just doing straw posts. Did we say, was he actually appointed? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. That was appointed. Okay. All I right. just wanted to double check, go according to Hoyle. Yeah. Okay. I'm not thinking that way. All right. Um, did you have Twice. Mayor Pro Tem degree? Um, uh, for everybody that offered to run, I mean, it's all, we're always impressed with the caliber of the people that come forward in Pacifica and, and do hope that you find some way to still be very active and participating. And uh, we haven't had all of our planning commission meetings. I really do urge that we not skip planning commission meetings. That's very concerning. Okay, thanks again. Well, John, John wants to say um, pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. Council Member Keener. Yeah. Um, I also um, want to acknowledge uh, the qualifications of everybody that applied for the Planning Commission. It, it really was impressive and um, it, it was difficult. Thank you. Okay, with that, we're going to go to item uh, number six. This is the adoption of the resolution of support for Peter Point Headlands and the California Coastal Trail Priority Conservation Area PCA applications. <coughs> the proposed action is to move to adopt resolutions of support for the Priority Conservation Area applications for the Peter Point Headlands and California Coastal Trail and to receive and file the report on the existing Bay Area Ridge Trail PCA. Uh, staff report, please. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. I am Christian Murdoch, an Assistant Planner with the Planning Department. The resolutions for your consideration this evening are related to the Priority Conservation Area, or PCA, program, a component of Plan Bay Area, the integrated long-range transportation, land use, and housing plan for the San Francisco Bay Area. The PCA designation was created to identify regionally significant open spaces where broad consensus exists for long-term protection, but where near-term development pressures may present a threat. The City Council's adoption of resolutions of support will bolster the PCA applications for the Pedro Point Headlands and C uh, California Coastal Trail areas, which will be reviewed by the staff and the Executive Board of the Association of Bay Area Governments, or ABAG. The San Mateo County Parks Department has kindly offered to submit the PCA nomination application for the Pedro Point Headlands, and the State Coastal Conservancy has done the same for the California Coastal Trail. The application deadline for submission of the nominations to ABAG is May 30th, and the ABAG's executive board is expected to act on these nominations in July. Staff respectfully requests the council's adoptions of the two resolutions of support for the Pedro Point Headlands and California Coastal Trail PCAs and recommends that the council accept, receive and file the report on the Bay Area Ridge Trail. Thank you. Thank you very much for that report. Do I have questions from council? 
No, I have lots no, of no questions at all. <laughs> I do have a question. Okay. Go ahead. He's first. Okay, Council Member O'Neill. I just had a question here. Um, the first PC under Pedro Point Headlands. There's a statement there. The proposed PCA will include all of the undevelopment portions of the Pedro Point Headlands, including the parcels owned by City of Pacifica County, San Mateo, and State of California, but, and a portion of the property by David Colt, but it doesn't affect any other private property, right? That's undeveloped up there, just what's named there. Uh, well, that's, that's my understanding of the county's intention. Uh, Councilmember O'Neill, um, if there are other significant undeveloped portions, I suspect you're referring to the remainder of the Colt property. Okay, because I know I think pretty much all of it is owned by public, but I want to be sure we weren't doing something for private to private property other than the the Colt property, which is under contract. Okay, Th that's correct. And this designation does not in any way impact the uh, land use regulations that are set forth in the general plan or in the city's zoning and other ordinances. This is strictly uh, a sort of a marketing mechanism, for lack of a, a better term at the moment, to identify this area as important uh, and to qualify it potentially for future funding. But it in, in no way affects the developability of any, any property, whether public or privately owned. Okay, I just wanted to check on that. Thank you. Mayor Pro, Pro Tem Degree. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't asked, I didn't see anywhere where we were being asked to prioritize between the two, that both of them are eligible? No. Correct? That's correct. There's no need to prioritize. Uh, it's not a competitive process uh, at this point. It's a matter of identifying areas of importance. Um, ABAG may act one way or another uh, when it considers the applications, but there's no reason to believe that there's a, a limited amount of resources to identify and to designate them. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I have a card, one, one card that I have um, from Dinah Verby. If you'd like to come up and speak on this issue. If anybody else would like to speak on this issue, please. Thank you. Yes, good evening. Uh, Dinah Verby, uh, Vice President of the Pacifica Land Trust. Um, I'm just here to support this resolution, both resolutions. Um, as you all know, the land trust, I think this was probably the first project the land, the land trust took on when we were formed back in the early 90s. And um, we've worked a long time to try to restore and revegetate that property. Um, I think, uh, you know, we're all looking forward to the future preservation of this property and the, and the completion of the coastal trail. And all of these motion, the, this resolution will all help in that because it will put this area as well as Pacifica in general and the coast side in general um, in a really good footing to attract funding later on to, to realize this vision that we've had for over 25 years. So I'm very excited that this is coming before you. I'm really excited the county is moving forward with this application. I want to thank specifically and especially um, Councilmember Nyhart because she first brought this item forward, I think, two or three years ago. Um, and we've been working towards that for a very long time. And I just wanted to let you know the Land Trust has submitted uh, a letter in support. Um, and this will be submitted to ABAG as well. So thank you. Great, thank you for those comments. Um, I also have a card from Lynn Adams. I think this is absolutely a huge, huge opportunity. And I think um, just like we invite all our Earth Day volunteers and, and everyone in general to be an Earth hero, we also invite them to use their voice to speak up for the environment. And this is a wonderful way of capturing that motto and, and, and creating a spot where people could travel by bicycle safely back and forth. It's an opportunity, a step in the right direction to create an opportunity for people to bicycle to and from Pacifica safely and, um, and, and to be able to draw funds and, and step out and use our voice of, of Pacifica to say we support this. This is our vision for a better community, a better environment for all of us. And it's a wonderful opportunity. And um, I ask you to use your voice as a, a, a spokesperson for Pacifica 
to, to go forward with this and, and see what we can make happen because that's how it starts. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. As I have no more cards, I'm going to bring it back to council. And I have one light, uh, Council Member Nyhart. Well, as Dinah Verby commented, it's been a while. But it's one of those things that when this kind of thing happens, it's just, it's so worth it to bring the idea back, to, to keep talking about it. Um, one Bay Area planning is complex. That's why I invited people to come. It's complex to sit on the association, the executive board for the Association of Bay Area Governments. All nine counties have different issues, different needs. It was stunning to me to see that we really didn't get much in the way of um, the first go round. But in our next go round, I mean, I, I love seeing all of this. Um, the Ridge Trail, I mean, I assume we have to do it as separate motions, but this priority conservation area is, is I would not use the word marketing, not to take issue, and thank you for all your work on this, both of you, but Christian, you've really taken it. Um, it's more of making us eligible for the things that will complete this project. We are a city that doesn't have the kinds of resources that I wish we had. We, we are amazingly good, though, at finding things. And we, I brought back a list of different grant opportunities. Uh, the land trust, I cannot thank more for being an absolutely outstanding partner. And your stewardship in this has been, your efforts in moving forward, Dinah, Julie, everybody, um, the grant money that you've put up there, the work at Restoration, I am just so proud to have the opportunity to designate this site and the public areas as a priority conservation area. It'll be an excellent addition to the county park. I am thankful for the county. I'm thankful for our city manager. It just, it seemed like everything just sort of moved together. And yes, I even have to thank Don Horsley right now, our supervisor, for helping with that. Um, if we didn't have all of these pieces constantly coming together, we wouldn't make this happen. So um, now this is the beginning, but at least the county is going to take on the bulk of the load in, in sort of some of these application processes. And so at the very least, when we're ready, I am absolutely thrilled to make this motion. Great. Thank you. Councilmember Keener. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, that my three sisters are visiting from uh, Ohio and Washington DC well and their spouses uh, several years ago uh, one sister and one spouse um, we, we took them up on the headlands and they were so impressed uh, and their kids at that time but um, they were so impressed that they wanted to come back and we went up this morning uh, you know, with the other two sisters and, and their spouses, and uh, took them on a little hike up and up up to the uh, to the headlands. And of course, it's it's spectacular. Um, I think uh, this will be uh, uh, just a tremendous asset for Pacifica. Great, thank you very much. And I. I'd just like to also extend my gratitude. This is something that makes Pacifica so incredibly special, and it's something that I did not know exactly how majestic it was until Lynn Adams actually took me for a hike up there, and I was just awestruck at how incredibly beautiful it is, and it's such a sight for so many to come and experience and appreciate. Um, Pacifica is just an, an amazing, awesome area. Thank you very much to the Land Trust for all the work you've been doing over the many, many years, doing the habitat, habitat restoration and all of the, you know, Know, taking care of the erosion and all of the hard hard work that you've been doing on that trail um, largely um, it's, it's not that well known to the people of Pacifica how hard the land trust has worked to create this gem of a hiking area and a trail and also to, to uh, comment back on what Dinah had commented or Lynn 
both of you, I think, have commented about uh, bike, bikes being able to go up there and in the property that we have the option to buy from Dave Colt's property. Um, that is just so incredibly important for safety reasons, for um, just to get everybody out there to be able to experience our trails, whether you're riding a bike or uh, pushing a stroller or whatever it is. It's super exciting for us, and it would not have happened if it wasn't for all the work coming together of the land trust and the three women that are sitting in the audience and the entire uh, group that you, that you all work with. Please extend um, our gratitude. And, and as well as the county and the staff um, have all worked very hard together to make this come true. And it's really um, incredibly important for Pacifica. And thank you, uh, Council Member Nyhart, for uh, making sure that everybody was aware that this was taking place. It's just a, a great effort and deeply appreciative. And when you're ready to make the motion, go for it. I think unless anybody else has something. Mm -hmm. Oh, we already had public comment. Yeah. But Marianne, make the motion. Yeah. Be one motion, too. It and be, it can be for both? Well. Or three, yeah. It's three, yeah? OK. Um, I'm not going to make this fancy, but I am going to say that the reason I started to get teared up is that I think Sorry, but I think Jim Vreeland would be very proud right now. So in his memory, I wanted to say thank you. And I move that we adopt the PCA designation for um, the Pedro Point Headlands, for the completion, the connection in the Ridge Trail, and um, yeah, just adopt all those resolutions. <laughs> California Coastal Trail and the Bay Area Ridge Trail. You yeah, California Coastal okay. Trail, the Bay Area Ridge Trail, the whole darn thing. Just do it. <laughs> All right. Ma thank you. Uh, oh. Ma ma oh. Uh, he, yeah, oh. she, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Degree. I'll second that for sure. Thank you all very much. Great. And with that, uh, let's vote. And that passes five to zero. Thank you. Okay, and with that, um, that's the last uh, item on the agenda, so I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you all. Okay, who has a kid that wants, well, I'll give him my name.